Hey, welcome. Welcome to the studio tonight. Uh, tonight we kind of have an interesting class in store. So I hope that you have your cling wrap ready because we're going to be using saran wrap tonight to do this class. Um, I have a few things I want to cover before we actually get to the painting. So make sure that you have your cling wrap available. Go snag that. You may want to have a hair dryer to use to dry your paint with. You also may want to have a masking fluid pen. I'm going to be using one. You're going to need a pencil and you're also going to need an eraser because we will be doing a little bit of drawing tonight. Um, we're really going to try to make this work tonight. Sometimes with saran wrap, you want it to dry a little bit. So that's why we're doing a couple of images tonight. Um, but I think it's going to be a really good time. So first things first, we need to cover a couple of things for you guys before we move in here. As some of you know, as my monthly class, monthly class students know, we've changed our forum uh, where we can access our classes. And if you're a fan of this channel and you've been following this channel for a while, there have been some changes to the channel and you'll see those kind of moving forward. It really shouldn't affect you, but it might affect how you find me. So I want to make sure that we, you know, we can cover some of these things and make sure that you can get where you need to go. So bear with me here with the technical stuff. So moving forward, you're going to see some branding that's pagewepper.net. That's me. Um, that's where our classes are housed now. Uh, I've gone from three websites to one, which I'm super excited about. And uh, you can still go to ihavegumption.com. It will just redirect you to pagewepper.net. So just know that and know that you'll see some changes in our uh, channel, but it really shouldn't affect you too much. Honestly, I'm hoping to make this channel just so much more uh, vibrant and have some more live painting things going on too in the future. So just hang in there with me and I love uh, having your feedback too. So the other thing that I want to talk to you about, um, let's go to, we're going to check out our website, my website here for just a second. Um, when you come to my website at pageweber.net, this is what it's going to look like. And if you want to go to classes, you want to sign up for the monthly class, you can just go up here and go to classes and you can find everything that you need. So I'm just going to click on this calendar. If you're not a part of the Facebook group, which is a, a private group, if you're not part of the monthly club, then you can come here and you can see when classes are happening. And this is our class that we have right now. This class stays up for a week and then goes into the private portal. Uh, and then this is our private class where we get together via StreamYard or Zoom, and we have a private class together uh, where people can ask questions and we can just trade stories, and it's very enjoyable. Now, if you are a person who likes to have these things on your calendar, you can scroll down here and you can subscribe to the calendar, uh, and that can get you into our classes as well. Now, if you click on classes here, it will show you the two different courses that I have available. One is the monthly club that's $15 a month. The other one is a canned course that you can take as you please. It's just a video course that talks about color theory and texture and things that I offer as well. So if you do decide you want to be a part of our monthly meetup club and part of the Facebook group, you can just sign up here. If you're a student and you need to log into the portal, you can just come up here where it says class login and that should get you into the portal. If you have troubles, let me know, uh, but that should get you there. Now, when you get into the portal, let's take a look at this really quickly for those of you who have made the switch but haven't really looked at this too much. This is the home page here. And if you hover over here, we have all of our private classes, the supplies, you know, that I use, um, our YouTube classes, our private classes. But this is the home page. So if you scroll down, it gives you our class schedule. And it gives you links to both of these classes. 
And below here, we have class workbooks. These are actually, um, right now, they are not PDFs, but they are pictures that are available for to you. So you can see what we're using for these classes, and this is tonight's class. So if you're a student in our club, all you have to do is right-click that, and you can save that image to your computer, and you can print it from there. Um, and next week's class, we have lots of reference photos for that class. So you may want to print those. If students want to have PDFs, I'm happy to provide those to you. Just let me know. I'm really just trying to find what works for you. Now, if you scroll down a little bit further, we have information about our Facebook group. And if you have trouble or you run into troubles, I have a form here for you to fill out and it will just shoot me an email and make it really snazzy and quick. And what's great about your questions are I can add them to our frequently asked questions down here uh, to help other people when they have issues uh, navigating the system here. Of course, all of you know me personally, so you can reach out to me. Uh, but I just wanted to have a run through here so you knew where you can find these workbooks in the future and just right click those. If you really like I hate these images page just shoot me an email and I will give you a PDF. And again, that's for our private club class members who have been painting with me for a couple of years now. Uh, and yeah, so that is the portal. You want to sign up and join our private classes and get all the stuff behind the scenes. Just hit up the website and you can join there. Okay. And if you have any questions, throw them in chat. Okay, let's see. Oh, I even had a thing here that didn't print. But for those of you who are tuning in for the first time or uh, from out of state, let me know where you're tuning in from, which state you're in, which country you're in. You might be overseas. Okay, so let's talk about tonight's class just a little bit. We're going to have to be, uh, we're going to be drawing some gourds, which... I was also going to tell you about this, so I'm going to switch this really quick. If you go to unsplash.com and you need imagery of gourds and you're not part of our private club, you can search for gourds under here and there are all kinds of interesting shaped uh, gourds and pumpkins and things to give you an idea of the texture that we're looking for that we're just going to try to replicate a little bit and to understand what we're drawing tonight. We will be free drawing so there's some examples for you as we move forward. Okay. All right, I'm going to click out of there. And we'll switch to our other camera and we'll get started drawing and we'll get the show on the road. Okay. Okay. So you can see these are a couple of examples that I did for our first, for our workbook and things. And one thing that's tricky about using saran wrap in this way is that it's really good to let it, the saran wrap sit and dry. And because we have about an hour to paint, this might uh, work and might not. So that's why we're doing a couple of these tonight, just to see what we get. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here because I actually did this twice on here to create some texture and hopefully you can see it here to create a little texture here's a little saran wrap texture then I also did it when I repainted over the top and put some saran wrap on there and it kind of created some really light texture here we're going to use some darker colors tonight to make this stand out a little bit more see if we can make it a little bit more vibrant but this is what we're shooting for and I would definitely save this class uh, to do it. You may have to do it a couple times uh, to get what we're looking for here. So I started to just sketch this out so you wouldn't have to wait on me forever. But it looks like it's not quite dark enough. So I'm going to make it just a little bit darker. So I suggest you get out your pencils and your erasers. And 
These are very organic shapes, so you cannot go wrong with them. The, the point is here to have a good time. So what I've done is I've created this kind of gourd-like round shape here and with some nubbies because these uh, gourds are really kind of funkalicious and fun. And so this will be our first one. And you can really use any colors you want tonight. I'm using, I'm gonna use a green, uh, a sap green and a medium egg yolk yellow, which uh, I believe the yellow that I'm using is a permanent yellow deep. And the green that I'll use is a sap green. And then I will use an orange. So you can mix an orange from a yellow and a red, or if you have a convenience color orange, I have a transparent pyrrole orange. It's a great transparent orange. It's very vibrant, but you can definitely use what you have. If you have sparkly colors, you can use those too. So for our next board, I'm just sketching out, I'm going to use this gourd here. I'm going to use this shape. And I'm just kind of block, blocking in the overall shape here. Make it funky and weird and uh, it's going to work just fine for you. This is a little bit light, but just lightly sketching it in so I can then go in and go over it a little bit darker. Whenever you're drawing, however you, you know, no matter what you're approaching, I recommend this approach to get you started. So you start with the overall shape and just lightly sketch that in, and then you can go in and do the details. It really does help when you're trying to create things uh, that are more accurate. And you don't have to do a ton of erasing. You can start lightly in the beginning and then you don't have buyer's remorse or eraser's remorse. So you're also going to want to have masking fluid for those who have turned tuned in late. Um, because I'm gonna go around the edge uh, with masking fluid. You, If you don't have masking fluid, uh, that's fine too. Uh, there is the chance this could smear, and so that's why I'm using the masking fluid. And the reason, again, why I'm doing two of these is because our results, I, it might give us time to have one of them dry in case our results are not as optimal. I think if I use darker colors this go around, we're going to be able to see that texture a little bit more. So I'm just sketching this in. Again, these are just organic shapes. You can get more detailed if you want to as you um, maybe do this later on. But uh, let's see here. The point really is just to have a good time with this and make it, I mean, we are in fall and uh, I thought this would be the perfect thing for this time of year. Okay, let's see. I am kind of not straight here. There we go. So this is my masking fluid. Uh, it's a masking fluid marker. I got this at Dick Blick in... Um, Salt Lake City, but you can get these at Hobby Lobby. Uh, they're either Molotov or some other kind of um, brand. You just shake it up a little bit. And then what I will do is I'll go around the edge here and I'm just drawing around the edge. And it will dry, it should dry pretty quickly. 
And if you do this kind of over where you've drawn, the likelihood that you'll be able to erase the pencil marks is very high. And what's nice about this blue one is that you have, you can really kind of see it. It's a little harder to see for those who are um, tuning in probably, but it's easier for me to see. So then I know uh, where it's at here. If you, you know, one, I have a gal that I know that I admire and she uses masking fluid a lot in her work to create some interesting compositions and colorways. And if you're a student of mine or if you're a YouTube fan, um, you know, do you have an interest in maybe using masking fluid in a unique way to create paintings? Might be a really interesting assignment moving forward. And for those of you who are in the private club, next week we are doing a still life and it is fall themed, but you can use whatever kind of objects that you would like to use to create your painting. Uh, so you don't have to use the imagery that I put in our portal. You can use your own imagery if you want. Okay, so we have our gourds, we have our masking fluid around our drawing. Uh, now we need to mix our colors and I would highly recommend that you get your cling wrap and you take a couple of um, sheets of it uh, and you cut them and have them kind of ready to go uh, because this can be kind of a fast process. And so just Make sure you've got those at the ready. I'm going to get my colors ready here. Let's see. So this paper takes up quite a bit of space. Let's see if we can lift our camera some more. There we go. This is helpful. Okay. So I'm going to mix up some colors. Again, like I said, I'm going to mix up a green. I have a sap green. But if you don't have sap green, don't worry. You can mix a green with a yellow and a blue, an ultramarine blue. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to dip into my, well, actually, I'm going to use our sap green. So I'm just going to cheat and do it the easy way. But again, if you need to do this color, we will use yellow and ultramarine blue. I think I need to make sure I've got quite a bit of pigment in this. Just to make sure we can get some real interesting texture here. And I should say too, while we're doing this um, assignment, you might want to have something that you could sit on top of the saran wrap. So uh, maybe you've got a, a like a, a weight for sewing or you've got a little container or a little notebook or something, depending on how big your paper is, that you can um, put on top of your saran wrap. That's really going to help this whole process a little bit. I'm going to get some yellow here. Again, this is a permanent yellow deep. And it's kind of like egg yolk color. I'm really fond of this yellow. Just even in my oil painting, I like to use it quite a bit too. So I'm going to bring my water a little closer. And there are a couple ways that you can work uh, with this. You can, um, oh, hello. Good morning from China. Let's see, there we go. Good morning. Welcome to our class. I hope you are painting along with us. It is 7.20 here, so we're in the evening from where you are. Okay. 
I think I want a little bit more yellow here. So that's pretty good color here. If you notice that you need to add some water, then do that. I'm gonna mix up some orange here too. This is a transparent pyrrole orange, but if you need to do orange, you will mix a red with a yellow. And you can use um, lemon yellow, you can use a medium yellow like this, and it will get you a nice orange. And, uh, you know, there are a couple ways that you can work here. You can work wet into wet with this. I'm going to do our first application wet onto dry. So that's why I want to have enough uh, pigment here mixed. So I'm ready to rock and roll. Again, this is kind of normally what we will do is we will put down our paint. We'll put our saran wrap over the top of it. And, and crunch it down. And usually you wait until the watercolor dries. Because we have such a quick class here, we'll see how that works tonight. But I'm gonna try to, to do my best here. So I'm gonna snag my saran wrap just so I have it close at hand. So you can see I have a, a sheet It's already clinging to itself. So I have a sheet that's about this big and I'm gonna crumple it up a little bit, but we aren't quite there yet. I have all my pigment set up here. I might have to move this camera. We'll see if I lose. There we go. Sometimes my camera dies on me here. And I think I'm going to try to use a little bit bigger brush for this one because these are pretty good sized. So this is a small uh, jumbo round brush. This is by Silver Black Velvet, uh, but it's a pretty good sized brush that'll so hold quite a bit of paint and pigment. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to dip into my yellow first. And the key is really keeping this wet. And because I live in Idaho, it is so dry here. So I'm just going to try to really get some pigment in here. You may have to mist it a little bit with water. And I'm going to move into my orange a little bit here. This is a personal preference thing. So maybe you want to just use two colors of these colors. You can do that too. You may even find that you need to mix in a little bit more pigment. Okay. Trying to move quickly and to keep this wet. I'm going to rinse out my brush a little bit and I'm going to hit my green and hopefully nothing is drying because the key is this has to be wet when we lay down our saran wrap. So I'm going to take my saran wrap kind of crunch it up a little bit. I have this little palette that I'm going to set on top of it and scrunch it up. I'm gonna need some more saran wrap. So I'm gonna grab my second saran wrap, scrunch it up, and I'm gonna put down one of these little saucers on top of it. Okay, and I'm gonna leave this, and we're gonna to move to this other gourd, and we'll see how uh, you know, for this can kind of dry a little bit. Now this will vary for everybody, depending on where you are and how humid your climate is. But I'm going to let this dry because as you can see, we already have some interesting texture that's happening here. And it's going to be really neat when we pull the saran wrap off. 
I'm going to leave that. I obviously have to get some more saran wrap now because I used my other saran wrap. So the key with this is being prepared a little bit to use your saran wrap. Because what we will do then is once this is dried, we can do this technique more than once over the same painting, or then we can paint over the top of it and use the texture that it's created to create a really fun and cool design. So, all right, let's move to our next gourd. This one I might approach a little bit differently with my colors. Let's get kind of situated here so you can see my color. And maybe I can show you the difference between working wet on wet and wet on dry. So this is wet on um, wet on dry. Here I can just add a little bit of water to where I want to go. This will direct your paint. The only issue with doing it this way is it can potentially um, water down your paint, which might give you a more subtle design. That might be um, desir desirable for some of you. So this one I'm going to dip into my orange and put it in between these areas here. And you can see it dilutes the, the pigment and also helps it spread. If you need more vibrancy, just dip into your color right there on your palette. And I think I'm gonna add some yellow. I'm gonna rinse my, off my brush a little bit. Dip into some yellow. Tap that into some places here. Now, because these colors are so close to one another in hue, I'm gonna add a little bit of green here. We'll do this at the bottom maybe. Cause these gourds are so funky. Now I think I'm gonna dip into my pigment a little bit just to make sure I've got plenty of pigment. Means I'm going to do it into my yellow. Now I'm making sure everything's still pretty wet. It might take this one a while to dry. I'm happy it's pretty wet. It's got a little bit of paint in there. Let's see what happens here. So I'm going to take my saran wrap, scrunch it up. Let's create some texture. And I'm going to grab my other thing of saran wrap. Grunt it up. And make sure we press it down a little bit. And I need a little something else to push that down a little bit here. All right. So it doesn't look like much right now. But, you know, this is kind of fun. And it's really fun to do the reveal. You may decide you want to do a reveal and let it sit overnight. We're going to try to see what we got with our first painting here and see if we got any texture. So let's, I'm going to zoom in a little bit because what I'm going to do at this point is try to dry it up so I can retain some of this. So I'm going to get out my hair dryer. I'm going to lift this up. See all that fun texture? That's what we want. So I'm going to hit it with my hair dryer. I'm going to mute myself really quickly and throw up my maybe um, where is it? 
Well, I'm going to mute myself. I'm not sure where my little, uh, oh, there we go. There we go. That that is so funny. I had to come out here. <laughs> I I mean, I would still try it with uh, your press and seal and see if it worked at all. But it it might not be as successful. Uh, but good luck. Let me know how that goes. <laughs> so as you can see, we have lots of texture here. Lots more than we had on the first go. Uh, which is great. You can really use this texture. You could leave it or continue to paint into it, which we will try to do a little bit of that here. I'm going to zoom out a little bit so you can kind of see. That's quite a bit of texture. And I do think what makes it more successful is having lots of good pigment in there because as that saran wrap kind of presses and moves things around, it it pools things and creates some interesting uh, colors and things too. So, all right. So I think now, because this one was so successful and went so well, we will try to do our other reveal and see if it worked out just as well. Uh, again, I'll have to mute myself just so you don't have to listen to my hair dryer. Uh, but I'll be right back.
Okay, well, look at this. We've got lots of texture. So as you can see, we have so much more texture than I had when I, I did this uh, for our examples. And a lot of that texture, it helps to really press down the saran wrap as well as having some colors that have a little more high contrast. Uh, and it'll just make it more interesting. Of course, you can use whatever colors that you want to, uh, but we have a lot of fun textures here that we can work with. And so let's see, can turn off our banner here. So now what you can do is you can really go into these and paint what you want to here. Uh, or if you love it the way it is, you can do minor changes to it and just have fun with what you've created. These are great for cards. You can send somebody your artwork in a card form and, uh, you know, wish them well for the season. So at this point, you could remove the masking fluid that we have put around our gourds. As you can see, I got a little wild with my saran wrap, but um, at this point, you can do that. Now I'm just taking a little bit of my sap green here and I'm kind of painting in these stems here. So we make sure that we get all of those filled in. And you can also, at this point, you could do a little painting like in this, this image, I had some recessing that was happening. Um, and I'm going to share this image really quick since I have it up here to show you. But you can see here, let's see if I can zoom in here, how we have some of these ridges here. So this was what I was hoping that I could do uh, with this. Now, because of how my paint spread, um, it... I might be able to take some paint away or just use the texture that I already have that's come, come out here. So I think I might do a little bit of painting to see. Well, maybe I will do some lifting because that might be a good thing for you guys to see. So I'm going to switch to a clean water here. and rinse out this brush, Let's see what we can do. I have some paper towels here, so you're gonna wanna have a paper towel handy. And I've tapped, tapping off excess water here, and I can see where my ridge is. I can just gently kind of scrub this area to bring it forward. Then I take my paper towel and I lift that up a little bit and then I can create this ridge. It does mean that you're taking away some of your texture. So we're just scrubbing out or lifting some of this paint. Some of this texture I really hate to remove. But like I said, you could always add in texture again. You could lay down some paint and put some of your saran wrap over the top of it again. And create texture upon texture. So this is one of those fun assignments where you can really explore make a mess and play with your tools at hand here because every time you do this assignment it's going to be a little bit different so if you wanted to um, enhance your ridges you could always go in with a brush 
This brush that I'm using here, this is a Utrecht brush. This is a number six brush. This is actually a really good size of brush to have in your watercolor arsenal. It's a round brush. I have this smaller brush. We'll see what, what we can do here. But you can always lay in some paint over the top of it to help recess that a little. And if you don't scrub, you still keep some of this texture behind because it is dry, which adds kind of this funky feel. So there's a lot of possibility here beyond gourds. Um, and you can play with the color that you bring in here. This orange looks super orange on the screen. I'm just trying to give this a little bit of shape. Kind of abstract forms here. So in the comments, if you're painting along with me, let me know how your gourds are turning out. With these nubby gourds, we have lots of nubbies here, which you can add kind of some shadows to your nubs. You may need to use a different, an altering color to help kind of make them come to life. This green kind of helps create a sh more of a shadow than our orange because that orange gets kind of lost there. Yeah, let me know how it's going in the comments for you, if you can. And as you'll see, like some of these um, gourds in the images that are in Unsplash, they really have some interesting, fun textures. So don't be limited to what I've got going on here. You really live it up, have some fun. Just know if you're scrubbing and you're not lifting, you could scrub some of that texture away. Okay, let's see about this one here. This one has so much great texture. I hate to do anything here because I just love that so much. Looks like we're doing pretty good on time here. And you can just layer color over the top. You can mix your colors together a little bit if you want to create kind of an edge. A 
What's great about these kinds of assignments is that everybody winds up with something different. So if you are part of the monthly club, share your images in our Facebook group. We've got some really great different colors here. This kind of brown color by mixing this green and the orange. And then I just kind of added some lines here to our stem, which kind of helps it come alive a little bit after it's dry there. So it's kind of the funky gourd, but you can take it as far as you want to here. And you can make anything that you lift stand out a little bit more by adding a, a little bit darker color next to it. just have a good time with it you can even do some pumpkins but i thought since we did a pumpkin last year we could do some funky gourds this year so what happens when you're you're done painting and what do we do then well i'm gonna blast this with a hair dryer really quick and then i'm gonna show you how to remove the masking fluid or how I remove the masking fluid really quickly. So one moment, I'm gonna mute myself and I'll be right back. So I always kind of like using masking fluid because the reveals are always kind of fun too. So you can, you may or may not be able to see from your angle that I have masking fluid on the outside of these. So what I use is a rubber cement pickup. You can use an eraser. And I'll just rub the outside here where the masking fluid is. And because this is blue, I can kind of see it a little bit better. But I always recommend running your finger along the edge too if you think you didn't get masking fluid somewhere. But you wanna use this when it's dry. So if your painting is still wet, you don't want to remove the masking fluid just yet. You can kind of work in circles around it. But this also kind of erases our pencil marks too from where we drew our gourd. There are lots of ways to get texture and uh, I think it's, you know, fun to do the texture exercises because you 
uh, can think of different ways to use it in your painting. So one way that I'd like to use texture is using it behind in a portrait and using it in the background. So knowing what you can do with these different textures is really handy. But you can see because of this edge, we have some irregular edges as well, which makes this shape very interesting too. Now, uh, what you can also do, if you're not happy with this or not satisfied with this, you can go into this with colored pencils or even a black permanent pen to do an outline or to do some more drawing. So this can be a base for uh, a drawing and painting combo. And you can see I colored outside the lines in a couple places, but it's kind of fun to lift the masking fluid to see what you're left with. And this is a great uh, exercise for kids and for beginning painters as well. Uh, not an intimidating assignment at all. Just have fun with it. So there are your, your gourd sha shapes here. They're kind of funky. Um, you could keep working on them if you want to. Uh, let me know in the comments if you liked this class and if you or if you learned something new. Uh, I'd love to hear how it worked for you and if you liked it. And if you want more classes, subscribe to this channel or visit pageweber.net and check out my classes there. I'm going to switch my camera view here. Hit me up with some questions. Whoops, no. This is only because I can't operate my computer here. Many parts. Okay. Yeah, did you like this class? I want to know. Hey, awesome. I'm so happy that you were able to join us too. I'm going to say this is a noise, nice guy, noise guy. I'm so happy to see you here. It's nice to see some new faces and I love it when people join the class. Okay, so I'm going to hang out for a couple of seconds here. This was a really pretty quick class, uh, but if you do have questions, throw them up there. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, give it a try. There are lots of ways to get texture. You could try tissue paper um, as uh, Noise Guy has, uh, you know, qu questioned whether we could use tissue paper. Yes, you could. You could use cheesecloth. You could use a sponge to create texture like this. Uh, really, it's unlimited. You could use salt, which is going to give you a totally different kind of texture but I really, salt's kind of one of my favorites to use. Uh, so the sky really is the limit. I just say try it and see how you like it. And you can use um, paper towels that have texture too. You lay down some paint, you press the paper towel in there and you lift it and you'll see the texture that's from the paper towel there. If you do use cheesecloth, I would recommend just leaving the cheesecloth on the painting and seriously letting it dry. Um, tonight we kind of lifted it and it was still a little wet and it worked out, but with cheesecloth, you really want to make sure that it um, has an opportunity to kind of dry into the paint to really put that texture in there. So, yeah. Well, great. I'm super excited that you guys were here tonight. Thank you so much. And uh, you made this class fun. And I can't wait to see what you come up with and create. If you want to connect with me on the socials, the best place now to connect with me is at Paige Weber Art. You, I don't know if you can read this, but 
connect with me there. Share your work. I would love to see it. Uh, thank you. And I, I can't wait to see you next time too. So have a great evening, guys, and I will catch y'all later.